She has long been at the forefront of the nationwide effort to save the wild horses in the burrows of America. I present to you Mrs. Velma B. Johnson, commonly known as Wild Horse Annie. I had heard about airborne roundups, but as so many of us do, when something unpleasant doesn't touch our lives directly. I pretended it wasn't there and maybe it would go away. The roundups were cruel, young relief, indiscriminate. Injuries were numerous. Sometimes these animals were chased at breakneck speed. The horses are iconic. It's a symbol of the West. It's a symbol of freedom. I see these roundups and I see what they're doing to these beautiful animals. I've been around horses a good part of my life, but being around a wild horse is a whole different experience. I like to think they are symbolic of the indomitable spirit of America that we're going to survive in spite of anything. The Virginia Range is a 300,000 acre land area in northern Nevada. It encompasses Fernley, Silver Springs, Virginia City, and Dayton, and is home to approximately 3,000 free-ranging horses that have lived here for centuries. The Virginia Range horses were the ones that inspired a woman named Velma Johnson, aka Wild Horse Annie, to lead a movement to protest the manner in which wild horses were being rounded up for commercial purposes. Her movement led to the passing of the Wild Horse Annie Act in 1959. Ironically, the federal law that is in place today to protect the West's herds, the Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971, actually precludes the Virginia Range horses from that protection. So, when they need to be removed, they will go directly to auctions, which are often frequented by kill buyers, those individuals who purchase horses and ship them to Canada and Mexico for slaughter. The issue facing this particular herd of horses is quite unique. Unlike most of the wild horses who live in some of the most remote areas of the West, the Virginia Range horses' habitat falls largely on private land, and they are routinely being threatened by habitat loss due to urban development. For over 50 years, the main form of management of the West's wild horses has been helicopter stampedes and capture operations. There is a more humane and effective way to manage wild horses on the range while stabilizing their populations using a safe and proven fertility control vaccine called PZP. We knew we had to do something to help these horses and we needed to get creative. So we entered into a cooperative agreement with the Nevada Department of Agriculture, the agency responsible for overseeing the horses to humanely manage using the safe and proven fertility control vaccine PZP. This is that story. Mismanagement by the federal and state government over the years has let the horse population grow into a problem instead of an asset. It can be an asset and it should be an asset, but we have to manage these animals correctly to do it. The current procedure of rounding up the horses, you got two choices, they go to slaughter or they go in long-term holding forever. And we as taxpayers pay millions of dollars to keep them in holding. The lifetime cost of a mare taken into captivity with a roundup is between $35,000 and $50,000 a year. Well, the government is spending other people's money and they think it's a bottomless pit. Unfortunately, I think when you get to the government side, the heart is not there. It's statistics, it's arguments, but there's not a lot of heart there. There's just talking points. The current procedure, there's no end game. It's just, it's kicking the can down the road. We actually solve the problem. The American Wild Horse Campaign and its volunteers are humanely managing the Virginia Range wild horses with a fertility control vaccine with over 30 years of safe and proven use called PZP. PZP prevents fertilization in wild mares and is delivered remotely with a dart that is fired through an air rifle. The BLM fails at using PZP because they have never established a program that really uses it. So they don't have the manpower, They've never allocated the funds. And so consequently, they go to what's familiar and they've done it since 1971 when we passed the act. And that is they go to the helicopter roundup 
They gather him up, they take him in holding, they try to adopt him. If that doesn't work, they put him in long-term holding and the bill just keeps going up. PZP is actually a way to manage the horses and to keep the population down so that they can remain wild and on the range, which is where they should be. Each dose is about $35. So for the first year, we should dart three times. After that, it becomes less. The BLM's actually digging a deeper hole because the more horses that they gather, the more the horses react and actually breed more and have more babies. That's referred to as compensatory reproduction. This is in the National Academy of Science documentation that came out in 2013. But when you think about it, every foal that isn't born is $50,000 that you save because it doesn't go into the adoption program and into long-term holding. And that's money saved versus money spent. One day as I was driving into Reno, I came upon a truckload of mutilated horses, and I followed that truck. I saw for myself the brutality of the treatment. And I knew I could not live with myself if I didn't try to do something about it. When I was growing up on the farm in Connecticut, I was an avid hunter. I hunted every chance I could get. I was deer hunting and I shot a deer and it wasn't a clean shot and I had to go and put her out of her misery. She looked at me and cried. They cry and it broke my heart. That ended it for me. One thousand. <laughs> Currently, we're in the process of administering PZP to just under 3,000 horses total, which is the largest PZP operation in the world. So the dart gun does look like a rifle. It is CO2 powered, means it works on air. When I'm going out to dart and I pull up and see a herd of horses, immediately I'm getting my tablet out to pull up my darting reports and database so I can see who am I gonna be able to dart today. My spotter will hand me the PZP, we mix it up, and then we inject that into a dart. That dart is dropped into my rifle, then we're ready to go. When that dart hits the horse, it ejects the vaccine into the horse, pops out. We always shoot in the rump. We're very, very careful about hitting that area. We don't want to hit the horse in any other area. Some horses, they'll run a few feet and stop. Some horses will buck. The other ones will just kind of look and go, what was that? Our spotter's job is to watch where that dart pops out and we pick it up. We do not leave it on the range. We try not to pressure the horses. We try to be very horse friendly. It requires a lot of patience sometimes. We actually run a darting report and we do it the night of. So if somebody goes out the next day, it's current information. And so you entered into a database and then it shows on the darting report that horse has been darted, distance, which hip, by who. There's also safety to the surrounding areas. You can't dart too close to any highway. You cannot dart close to homes. We have an app that was recommended from American Wild Horse Campaign that will let me know if I'm on land where I can dart or not. Tracking of the horses, actually documenting them, is a huge job. You have to photograph the horse from three views, head on, either side. The horse gets a name, it gets a number, and that's how we keep track of the horse. It's a pretty cool system. The amazing value of PZP is that it does not change the behavior of the mare. 
If the mare is carrying a foal, it does not interfere with the growth of the foal, doesn't affect in any way the mare's milk, it doesn't migrate into the environment, and it's reversible. It does not change the reproductive system of the mare, so it does not sterilize, that's a myth. It's really a pretty amazing substance. The Virginia Range can be a great proving ground for programs, especially to the BLM, because it's contained geographically. We know how many horses are on it. So why not use this as a study ground? Let's use it as an example. And then we can go to the BLM and say, guys, we know how to fix this problem. It's gonna take five years, 10 years, but this is how we can fix it without causing these animals harm, without causing the environment harm, and by the same time, letting these animals roam free. This dedicated group of volunteers under the American Wild Horse Campaign in two years have darted more wild mares with humane fertility control than the entire Bureau of Land Management has done over the last four years. Wild horses absolutely can be managed humanely in the wild, and we've proven it. There's a, some corporations that have gotten behind this, but you couldn't do it without the local groups. These guys are my heroes. We'll be out there all day in 95 degree heat working our rear ends off. But the joy you get in knowing you're saving the horses, you're keeping them on the range, being amongst them, you get such a reward in your heart. The American Wild Horse Campaign does a great job of supplying us with the materials, the training, any help we need, they're there for us. It's a great team to work for. It's a thankless task. There's nothing easy about it. I mean, they're out there in the winter, in the snow, in the summer, in the heat, and they're out there doing the job simply for their love of the animals, love of the environment itself, and the way the animals interact with that. I'm just gonna tell you, thank God we have them. Otherwise, it would be a much different world around us. Working with American Wild Horse Campaign is very emotional to me, and I just feel very lucky and special to be able to do it. Doing this work has given me an outlet to feel like I'm doing something in a very productive way that makes a difference. I've been rewarded 10 times over with the experience and the challenge and the beauty of these animals and being amongst them. I still have that challenge of tracking something down, but now I'm helping them instead of hurting them. I'm living my dream now. We built the West on these horses. They helped us to become Americans in many ways. So when you add all that up, they've earned their place in the West. They don't judge. They don't fear you until you make them fear you. They just want to be free. They want to live the way they've always lived. And that should be everybody's right. You know, that's the great thing about living in America. If you believe in something, you can fight for it.